what should we talk about? <coughs> Any suggestions? Attachment. Attachment. About negating. negating. Awfully serious, aren't you? <laughs> Shall we begin with that question? Relationship. Man and woman, right, boy and a girl, right. Shall we start with that question, Mrs. Gandhi, in India? Would you like to discuss that, talk about it a little bit? This is off the record, isn't it? Huh? I won't be quoted in the papers afterwards, will I? Because I, if I may point out, I saw Mrs. Gandhi for several hours. She came to dinner, and the next day she came to see me again. We had a long talk. And you know a lot of things have changed since then. There's a general election now. Oh, can hardly hear, right. There's a general election now, and all the political prisoners have been released, except those who are, who, through violence, wanted to throw, out the, throw government down. Except for those, all the people who are politically in have been in prison, have, re have been released. And therefore, probably from that will follow a uh, Bill of Rights, human rights, and all the rest of it. Is that enough? Big one? What did she say? I'm afraid. I can't very well talk about all that because we had, you know, she came to see me twice, private, and I can't discuss it, sorry. It wouldn't be right for me to talk about her because she treats me as a friend. I've known her before, her father, and so we'll draw a line there, shall we? Now, Probably there will be freedom of the press. And I saw some of the editors, they were in rebel, rebellion against the whole, you know, and other people. But all that has been gradually being withdrawn. People are, the rich people are getting richer, <laughs> as usual. The poor people are just managing to survive. There is a population of 600, nearly 600 million, and birth control and all that, family control, should have been introduced about 30 years ago, then we've done something. But under Mr. Gandhi, uh, it was not allowed. And I saw the Prime Minister, I mean the Health Minister then, they were not allowed. But now that family planning has been introduced, and I believe it is operating, but I don't know if they will ever catch up with the enormous explosion of population. The monsoon, you know what monsoon is? Rains have been very good, and therefore 
the crop will be very good, people will be satisfied for the time being. Is that enough? Economically, the, uh, me, uh, you said that the freedom of the press was being reintroduced. I think so. I didn't say it would be. But if, even if it is reintroduced, can it not be withdrawn at any moment? Maybe. I'm not. I'm not a politician. I'm not. Um, what do you would say? I know. Please, I know great many people in India who are so-called top top people and political political people and others, intellectual and so on. And there may be freedom of press and now where the election is going on, it may be withdrawn. I don't know. I hope not. I know great many people are against Mrs. Gandhi, great many, for political reasons. And so, there it is. Is that enough, sir, about India? I'm all right. If you want some more, I'll tell you. Is that enough? Is that enough? Good. <laughs> what next? Attachment? And negation. negation and relationship. First of all, can we begin with considering the madness of the world? Hmm? Could we? Do you consider the world is quite insane? What do you say? Not balanced, rather crooked, rather corrupt. Anyhow, I've been in the great deal of in India from the North Delhi, Benares, Madras, Rishivali. Bang, bang, no, Bombay, and I met lots and lots of people. And from what I have observed, which may be wrong, and what I have observed in Europe <coughs> and in America, there is a great deal of violence, a great deal of s pursuit of pleasure, and religion has no meaning anymore except rituals, superstition, and the myth of Jesus being pursued, and so on, so on, so on. Observing all this, one feels – what does one feel? Huh? <laughs> what do you feel? Would you tell me what you feel when you observe all this? The poverty, overpopulation, the dictatorship of the right or totalitarianism, whether of the Mao or of Lenin, Marx, also called electorate dictatorship, which is called democracy, and the enormous amount of corruption in India, it is in incredible. It must be the world over. So when you look at all this, what do you see? Silence? It doesn't seem, it doesn't seem good. Huh? It doesn't seem healthy. So what, so seeing that, what, if you are sensitive, <coughs> knowing all that's happening, sex has become so extraordinarily important. Hmm? And it's incredible what's going on in the world. Hmm? Money, they're all pursuing money. 
They are all pursuing power, position, prestige. If you've got a name, you go to the, can do almost anything. So that's the world is. From that, to come to Brockwood or to go to any of the schools in India which are far away from towns, one feels what does one feel? Huh? Come on, say, help me out. One feels that being sensitive, which one must be, the certain things predominate in this world – money, sex and power. Right? The gurus have tremendous power. You know, it's like they are they are little Hitlers in a religious world. I've been attacking them all over India. <laughs> and you see this politically, so there is tremendous urge for money and power and position. Right? Are you aware of this? Do you know this? And coming here, one asks, I ask myself, if those of you who have been here for some time have observed all this and therefore turned your back on it, or do you favour it? Or do you pursue it? You understand my question? You understand my question? No, you don't understand. No, you don't. You don't turn your back in the sense I don't. You don't follow it. You don't accept all that nonsense. Go on, sir. Uh, what if you feel, if you know it, you see it is wrong and it is bad as an evil influence, but you feel helpless, drawn into it, unable to stop yourself from. No, that then you are a, then you are a slave to the environment. Then you are slave to somebody pushing you into the it. And that's that's totally unintelligent, right? If you are drawn into this mess, either you are not intelligent, rather insensitive, and you like that kind of thing, and so you go into it. You go in for all that. If you don't, you naturally say, "Sorry, I'm not coming into the game." And one asks if all the some of the students here are turning their back back or walking away from it, or are you pursuing it? That is, money. You must have a certain amount of money, but money as the principal aim in life, or sex, or power. Domination, one group against another group. I don't know if you have groups here, I hope not. And one asks, you should ask if you are moving away from all that. It's a very difficult problem. You understand all this? You understand all this, do you? No, not attitude. Uh, that, that's totally wrong. I wouldn't take an attitude. I, I don't want power. Finish. There is no attitude about it. I need little money, but money isn't the main thing in life. And sex has become extraordinarily almost lustfully important. And how do you 
as a school, as a group, as a student? How do you answer all these questions? Dead silence. <laughs> hmm? One sees the monks and nuns, the few who are left in the world. What's that? The monks and nuns. Oh, no, no. Like monks and nuns, and they're all the, gone, finished. <laughs> and he said, Look, I was listening to the other day in Rome, <coughs> and before I went to India, cardinal speaking about things hmm, in Italian, and he was saying that the church must be very strong. Strong in the sense of um, belief in Jesus and obedience to the Church, you know, the whole works he was turning out. And I was with some people and then paid not the least attention. They didn't care two pins what you were talking about. But the poor people do. Superstitious, ignorant people do. So come back here. Not Rome or the monks or the nuns or the people who retreat into monasteries and follow Zen Buddhism, Zen, and so on. They're all escapists. Right? Right? No, no. No, I'll tell you. I want to discuss it with you. I want to have a dialogue. Not just say, well, I um, turn your back on what you mean by it. Let's talk it over together. It seems that, in a sense, if you turn your back on it, on, on something, you have to first face it. No, you have, that's it. right. You have to understand it, haven't you? Yes. You have to go into it. Why money has become tremendously important in life? Why sex? Why power? You follow these three things. Why? Let's talk about it, go into it. And the group formation, the Indians and the Hindu, Muslims, God, you follow? The division of the world, the South against the North, the Italians, I can't tell you. In India, there's a very strong anti-Brahmanism. You know what Brahmins are? Huh? No? Oh, my goodness! Do you want to know something about it? Huh? Does it interest you what Brahman is, or it's all dead stuff? Yes, yes. <laughs> and so is Shakuntala, or Shushila, or Shakuntala. We're Brahmins. The Brahmins were uh, so-called aristocrats and the intellectuals of India. And they were very, very uh, orthodox, traditional. And they, you can see, I won't go into all the reasons of it, and so on. But the economic condition of India has, is now destroying all Brahmanism. They were not supposed to eat meat, drink, and all the rest of it. It's a very strict moral life. All that's broken down. So, there were these groups, the communist groups, the Mao groups, the Trotskyites, the you know, <laughs> Labour Party, and division in the Labour Party, and so on, division right throughout the world based on ideas, opinions, and judgment, right? And so they, that's the problem. We want to discuss, have a dialogue, come on. Hmm? Oh, geez. How do you regard money? What is your, not attitude, I want to ask you, what, well, how do you consider money? What value is money to you? Hmm? Oh. I groan. <laughs> Come on. Well, you to to travel or to I'm asking you, what value 
do you place on money? Well, doesn't it largely depend on how much of it you have? What? Huh? <laughs> doesn't it largely depend on how much of it you have or you have? Ah! Would you base it on needs? What you need? I need clothes, food and shelter, right? Need. I, but when that need goes beyond and becomes greedy, you follow? So what, what value do you place on it? As a human being, living in this monstrous world, I don't know if you consider the world is monstrous, I do, for various reasons, if you want it, I can go into it. <coughs> they, the people, <coughs> are pursuing these things, money, right? To them, money has become tremendously important. They think that will give them freedom, you know, all the rest of a house, a garden, all that. And servants galore, especially in India. Hmm? I never wash dishes in India. Here I do, upstairs. <laughs> all my bed was made in India by servants. I offered to do it, they said, for goodness sake, how can you? So, do you, do you evaluate money according to need? Come on, sir, please. Because this is what you are growing up into, you follow? <laughs> oh, you, you are old enough to evaluate, think it out. What do you need? More refrigerators, more cars, more aeroplanes, more this and more that? Well, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. You can easily theoretically say no. But when you are faced with this, how will you react to all that? Desire as well. Huh? Does not the need imply desire as well? I don't quite follow what you mean, sir. When you say need, uh, I don't know what you mean by need. Is I need certain things, right? Obviously, we need certain things. So, where does the need become uh, what? Huh? Not only greed, but the need slips into kind of possessive, acquisitive, um, heavy owning things which give you happiness. I don't know if you follow what I mean. If I have lots of, I used to know friends, their happiness consisted of having innumerable dresses and suits, hmm? cars, and you if, remove them and they're lost. When, when one sees a house of another and it's far grander and this and that, it, it com seems to plan yes. to see Yes, comparison that. comes out of greed. Agree by comparing, you want more. Right. So, I'm asking as a group of people living here, students growing up and facing the world, a world which is really quite terrible. I don't know if you... Where is Joe, Mr. Joe? There he is. Agree, sir? Right. You become really you have no idea what you are going growing up into. Really you don't. That's why please from now learn learn how to meet all this. Not just casually grow up and slip into all this mess. So, we'll come back to it. What value do you place on sex? (laughs) 
What do you think about it? I don't think it's that important. You may not. But what about the whole group of us, a community living here? What, what, what does, what does it mean to you? Especially the older, older students. That's a tremendous drive, you understand? Oh, for goodness sake. Is it a problem here? How am I to answer myself? I would ask if it's a problem in a relationship, uh, because uh, to me it seems that we... All right. Uh, All right. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I want to no, no, I wanna add yeah. something else. I'm sorry. It's just that... Uh, it seems that there is a... Uh, that... Uh, there is a difference of, uh, of, of for the two, uh, relationship and sex. I mean, that's why I ask, what, where do we place sex in a, in right, a let's, relationship let's, if there is... All right, let's talk about relationship is, and bring in that, the other. What does relationship mean to you? Huh? <laughs> being in a relationship means being communicated to someone. Huh? Being able to communicate to someone. So, you say relationship implies the capacity to communicate what you feel and think with another. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Is that what you call relationship? You may, you may be perfectly right, don't be nervous. You may be perfectly right. That is, I ca one can't communicate with everybody. Mm -hmm. Right? Right? I don't know why not, but we'll discuss that a little later. One feels one can talk to people, talk to another, when there is friendliness, hmm? when there is appreciation, companionship, and so on, hmm? and you feel you can say things from your heart, concealed ideas, uh, your fears, you can talk to him or her fairly easily. Hmm? Right? And you call that is a part of relationship. Hmm? One part of it. What else is there in relationship? Go on. Quality of? Permanence. Permanence. Yes, it doesn't begin today. Quality, quality of permanence. Breaking down of one's own sense of admiration. Be pardon? A breaking down of one's own sense of isolation. That is, are you saying relationship is or must be <coughs> the breaking down the walls which separate you, may bring about isolation? Is that it? And the desire for permanency. Right? Right? Is that what you call relationship? One is communication, the other is, in that relationship, the desire that it must continue permanently, hmm, till you die, and the other is that it acts as a a self-revealing process. Hmm? You understand what I'm talking? <laughs> I'm going to go. I, I say, it acts as a self-revealing process, which is the, you are, most people are self-centered. Hmm? You know what self concern about their themselves, their bodies, their looks, their how they walk. Concern about themselves. And that concern gradually brings about isolation, right? And relationship, it is hoped, 
will break down that isolation. Got it? Right. So, is that, is, is that what you call relationship? Must also involve caring. Huh? Must involve caring to the person you are relating to. That means caring. Well, there's, there's other possibilities. If we're talking about relationship in general... Um, I am talking of relationship with another, not in general. Well, all right, with another. That, uh, we, it sounds somewhat that we've been describing what I might call a, a, a nice relationship, but there are also those relationships of, where someone that I meet, I consistently... Repulse, push yes. him, walk away from me, or avoid him. Yes, yes we, we'll come to that. Let's go into this little bit slowly. So are you all saying communication, uh, the breaking down of self-centeredness, hmm, and the desire for permanency, and also a sense of affection, care, right? Care, affection means love. Hmm? Now, do you call all that relationship? good relationship, to be able to communicate to another, hmm, to ho in the, um, and hoping that relationship will endure, last, they won't break down, there won't be a divorce, and <coughs> breaking down the self-centeredness and love. Right? Would you all that include relationship? Are you are you following all this? No, I don't. I don't think, Krishna G, that the desire for permanence is a part of a relationship. What? There may, I don't think the desire for permanence is a necessary part of a relationship. There may be uh, a permanence. But I, it, I say, the I hope the hope that it lasts. But meaning yeah. that you don't just... the fact that it does last, or yeah. it may have within it the potential to uh, continually renew itself, <coughs> which is rather different, I would have thought, from a projection of permanence. I don't quite follow you. I didn't follow that, sir. Uh, the relationship may have within it the ability to renew itself constantly, and therefore not be a desire for permanence, but an actual yes. Can fact. Yes, yes, I understand. Is there, a, in that relationship, a constant renewal, not permanency, but a, a thing that is living, moving, changing, and yet be related? Right? Would you call all that relationship? Have a good relationship with another? Consider all these points as relationship. Should we also not consider whether such a relationship exists before we? Ah, I first would let's say, of course it doesn't exist. <laughs> but first, put look at the map as it as it is. What what is relationship? Attraction, hmm? sexual attraction the satisfaction in sex, and uh, desire for comfort. Hmm? She'll cook my meal, or he will do something for me, and bear my babies, or so on, so on, so on. All that is quarrel at the end of it. You have all the messy relationship that we have, right? Right? That's a fact. So we are saying, somebody said, one of them said, Let's talk about relationship. The one side of the relationship, all that, and the other side is breaking down relationship, right? <coughs> no? What do you mean breaking down relationship? What? what do you mean breaking down relationship? I'm re I want to be related to you. I like you. Uh, you're my girl or what a boy, wife. And gradually, I, you begin to quarrel. You say one harsh word and it's over. I don't know if you follow all this, huh? 
that there seems to be relationships in which there is care and others in which... Which doesn't care. care. Yeah. Yes. I may sleep with somebody and I really don't care as long as I have my pleasure. And it's over and I go off to be with somebody else. So what, that's why I'm asking, what do you mean by the word relationship? What are the implications in that? Not what actual a relationship is, which is no relationship at all. <coughs> well, suppose one falls in love, which is that unfortunate word that. Hmm? One falls in love with somebody. The, in that, there is a great deal of physical attraction, sex, and the pleasure of that company, and, <coughs> and gradually that thing wears down. Hmm? Get married, and gradually say, oh, God's sake, <laughs> I have to look at that woman all my rest of my life. Or he, she says to herself, my God, what a face he's got. What a bore he is! But she, but uh, she has to put up with the, the uh, man because she has got the money, he's got children, and all that. So she says, "I must stay." You follow? That's what is generally called relationship. I, I'm not being cynical. This is fact. So, in that relationship, if is included sex. You follow quarrels, irritation, and hard words. And so when you use a hard word, huh, the thing is beginning to go. You understand? I wonder if you understand all this. Because in that is involved, sir, a great deal. I don't want to go into it. <coughs> You are my wife or my husband. For whatever reasons, we are married, hoping that will last. And after a year or two, you begin to discover that I am not so <laughs> all that. I hmm? am not so good or uh, I am slightly weak. And I'm not always tell the truth, and I'm maybe flirting with another girl, and so on, so on. Mm? So you say a brutal word to me, and it freezes me. You understand? You understand what I'm talking about? So what has happened? The thing which I call love when I'm married has turned into anger, hurt. Wounds, huh? So take all that and look at it. What is relationship there? The fact, which is no relationship, right? Right. If I use you because you have money, because you are a woman, or because I want sex, and if I use you, and so and say that. Usage is love, because I'm unconscious of all that, mm -hmm. right? So I call it love, and you begin to discover really I married you for your money, or for your looks, or for your uh, body, for comfort, for some reason or another. I have a motive, mm -hmm. which of which I am not, may not be conscious. Then you say something very brutal to me. I'm hurt, because hmm? I've tried to conceal things from you. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And I, you have discovered something in me, and you you hid that, and so I'm hurt. Hmm? Oh, come on! Do you know all this? Don't you? So all that is a relationship. <coughs> now, what do you do about it? What do you actually do about it? It's okay. Uh, 
the way you uh, d you uh, d you uh, describe relationship with with physical attraction and 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 uh, power. Yes, uh, I want to possess you. I want to dominate you because you are my wife or husband, and I sex it plays a tremendous part in it, and I want to hold you. Uh, without you, Jean Michel, without you, I'm lost. I need you. But I wouldn't need this relationship. I mean, if it's just for the attraction of a person. I know. You're saying relationship is fine. He's fine. It's finer. It's a finer thing than that. I, no. I don't know anything about the finer. We start with what is. <laughs> then we can move to the finer. But if we, we say, look at the finer and then forget this, it means nothing. The fact is, we can only deal with facts. The fact is, as it is now, relationship <coughs> is a, becomes a terrible thing. You follow? Right? Uh, no? No. Huh? No. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. All right, Jean Michel, you say no. I'm your father. I want you to do something. I want you to follow me. My business, my law, lawyer firm, or politically, I want you to do that. And you say, please, I want to be an artist. Huh? And I fight you. I, you want to be an artist. I want you to become a lawyer. Yes. So our relationship is broken. Exactly. Because I can maybe if uh, if if it's I talk to him. You can there, talk there, to me. Maybe, you can talk there, to me. You can persuade me. But I want you to be something else which you don't want. No, okay. And this book, this is what's happening, sir, in life. No. So take all that into account. Where are you? <laughs> what is in in the school? You must have friends, relationship, say, what, how do you meet all this? Oh. How am I? If you don't answer my question, no, Jean Michel, answer my question, don't evade it. No, I, I, I'm trying to, to, uh, to, to, to get into what, to your suggestion, but I just, Look here, look, Jean Michel, écoutez, I'm asking you something. What is your relationship with another girl or boy? What is your relationship? Jean Michel is everybody here, not Jean Michel by himself. An expectation of certain qualities, of certain reactions to. Uh, a very selfish motive relationship is actually where you expect another person to you, you expect something from that person. So when you get it, you have a good relationship. When you don't get it, you have bad relationship. It breaks. <laughs> so as, as long what, as what does that mean? Follow it up, sir. What does that mean? You expect something from another, and when that person gives you what you want, hmm, he's you. You have good communication. You are very friendly. But if he doesn't, they will throw him out, politely, with kid gloves. So what does that mean? As long as you are being satisfied, it's good relationship. Is that it? Huh? Acknowledge it. Face the fact. Don't beat it around about. Face the fact that as long as you are satisfied, gratified, it is a good relationship. Hmm? 
no, we are not talking for the need. We are saying the fact. The fact is, I'm, I'm related to you as long as you satisfy me, sexually, in a, ten different ways. And then uh, peaceful, everything is peaceful. But if the wife or the husband says, Sir, look here, old boy, that's not good enough. I also want to be satisfied. <laughs> Which means you yield as much as you take. Now, let's. You see, you're, you're not facing facts, you're going, running away from it. In this place, at Brockwood, has relationship become sex? Has relationship has become <coughs> gratification? Wouldn't it have always been that way? Huh? Because wouldn't it have always been that way? Because I mean, as it is, <laughs> not would it be. The fact is, most human beings, in their relationship, want to be gratified, hmm? satisfied, feel contented. Don't disturb me. <laughs> We're a good relationship, but don't, don't too much push me. Is that what is happening here? Groups for me, and therefore, you know, beginning. Face it, answer me. I don't know. How can I? Yes, it seems to, it seems huh? to happen. Huh? Uh, it seems to happen to some degree. Yes. I'm asking. Does it happen here? Uh, when we go and sit down at meals. Uh, um, it could, uh, I'm asking you. You don't answer, answer me directly. Is, yes. Huh? Yes. huh? Yes. Huh? Yes. And you call that good relationship? As long as you satisfy me sexually, verbally, pat me on the back and encourage me, which are always satisfying me, we have perfect understanding. We communicate with each other most beautifully. But the moment I am not satisfied, that communication comes to an end. Right? Huh? And you call what is that relationship? Is it relationship at all? Because I'm concerned with my gratification, and as long as you give me what I want, it's a lovely. But Christian two people do listen to one another, yeah. Oh, come off it, they do. Of course they do listen, out of politeness, out of great male consideration, you know, all the civilities of man, you know, I have to listen to you. You are a bore, but I've listened to you. <coughs> this is what this is life. Don't you think also honestly is that's part of a relationship? Huh? You know, fighting and and uh, is not part of a relationship. So that just it, I'm asking you. If you realize <coughs> relationship mostly is self gratification mm -hmm. in different forms, you know, I'm not only putting in, a, I'm, to make it very brief, I put it sexually, comfort, rela possession, you know, it's all, but it's, it can be extended and, <coughs> and the more detail is much more subtle than all that. Taking all that, I see, is I want to find out what is relationship. We call that relationship. It's generally accepted that as a relationship and ends up in divorce and all the rest of it. But I want to find out what is right relationship. How can we find it if we live it this way? Huh? How can we find it if we live it this way? So, will you not live that way? <laughs> That is, 
we have going to be question of what is love. Is love gratification? Is love sex? Is love desire? Is love uh, something that is uh, easily communicable? I love you and you love me and, and all that? Or is love something entirely different? Don't you want to know all these things? Huh? How do you find out? By denying or negating or saying, no, I, it's an absurd way of living. Self gratification all the time. I'm, I'm reducing a very complex problem into a couple of words. When we feel lonely and isolated, it seems that we don't know what to do with that, so we look for friends. Yes. I met a girl the other day <coughs> in the drops. I've known her for many years. And she says, and she says I'm married. I said, I was very surprised because she, she said, you see, I married because you people weren't wrong me. <laughs> Therefore I married somebody. You understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Huh? Ah. You didn't hear it? I met this girl who I've known for many years and she got married. And I and she said, I got married because you people, that means all her friends wasn't there, therefore I was married. <laughs> That's what's going to happen to you. And you will call that falling in love. <laughs> so, you as a student, as a person who is going to enter into the most dangerous world, for God's sake, realize this. This world is so dangerous. You have to meet it with intelligence. Not say, well, I must be gratified and I'm therefore everything must you follow? Find out. That's why I say, for most people, money, sex and power. These are the things on which people live. Having found out, what do you do? No. Ah! <laughs> I mean by finding out, not uh, investigating hmm, with your heart, not with here, not with intellect. See if you live that way. If, if you are seeking power, hmm, if you are seeking money, if sex is, means everything to you, that's mere gratification, you follow the whole circus. Find out. If, if you say money is necessary, but it's not going to be the end of my life, hmm? then you'll, you say, well, I'll take it when it, I'll occupy myself with some job will give me my needs. Therefore, you intelligently limit your needs. You follow what I'm saying? Oh, it might. Huh? The world, sir, is asking you to be a great success. Hmm? Success in the sense, uh, be popular, well known, have plenty of money. Right? Which means power and abundance of sex. So, <coughs> now, we said. Look at it, is that what you want? Is that your drive, your direction, is that <coughs> your motive? 
examine it, look at it, find out. Not when you're in the middle of battle, <laughs> then it's too late, you're caught there. But here, you're young, you're trying to learn about not only geometry and history, but much more fundamental things in life. Right? Learn, find out how to live intelligent, which means placing a limit on needs. You may need hundred suits, need, and I may need only two, follow? And I won't be jealous of you, because I am satisfied with my needs. Is not need a matter of concept? What? Is not need a matter of concept? Uh, no, no, it's not a concept, certainly not. I need food, clothes and shelter. That's not a concept. How can one need a hundred shoes? Huh? How can one need a hundred shoes? I, I talk a great deal, hmm? and I need several suits, because of, for various reasons, the and, and so on and so on. So I need a great many suits. And he says, well, I only need a couple of suits, it's enough. Shoes will then go out to work or do what's necessary. Necessary, and so on, from that follow <coughs> intelligent action. What usually happens is that I say, well, you've got seven suits, so I want eight. You have eight, if that's your need. Have a hundred, if it's your need. But when it, when it becomes greed, there is no limit to it. You acknowledge um, practical needs. You also have to acknowledge the psychological needs. And no, no. Do I depend on clothes to make me feel very comfortable, rich, and happy, glory? Huh? Will the clothes make me, or I make the clothes? <laughs> No, come on. So, you also have to find out what pleasure means, right? Because apparently sex is associated with pleasure, right? And what, don't talk about sex, pleasure, find out the implications of pleasure. Why the mind, the brain, pursues pleasure in different forms. Having hundred suits may be a great pleasure. Hmm? Or having one suit also may be a great pleasure. Or the pleasure of non-possession and possession. The pleasure of owning somebody, owning a house, all the rest. Pleasure. Is that what you want in life? If that is what you want, then sex becomes tremendously important. Huh? It's the American ideal. Uh, American, sir. The America is spreading America. all over the world. So. <laughs> I mean, it's written into the Constitution now. Yes, 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 I know, happiness and all the rest of it. But I'm talking of something else, pleasure. Pleasure is not happiness. So what, what do you consider, as, gr as young people growing up into this uh, ugly world, where, what is your relationship with the ugly world and yourself? 
You understand what I'm asking? Look, you're going, you are now young. You're going out later, I yeah, hope, much later. Hmm? Meet the wolves <laughs> of various types of wolves. Hmm? How do you how do you meet it? Aren't you concerned? Or you say, I'm too young, for God's sake, I'm not yet ready for that. Then you say, I'm too young, leave it at that. Quite right, you're much too young. But don't imitate the older people. <laughs> Good to be young. And youth is wasted on young people. Huh? Right? So we don't really see how dangerous the world is. Oh no. Don't you see the danger of the world? <coughs> huh? Are you blind? So blind as all that? I'm Please, grow older students, not the young people, for God, remain young, fresh, innocent, alive. Don't imitate the old cranky people. <laughs> Don't you see the world? Walk down any street, Regent Street or Bond Street or Piccadilly, any street. Those are fashionable streets, but go down East End. You see, you see it all. <coughs> you know, well, I won't go into all the details. Go on. So the, the problem seems to be that here, not in Regent Street or Bond Street, but here where I'm lusting for power and I'm lusting for money. That's what I'm asking you. Yes, I am. I accept it. You say, are you sure you're saying, be accurate, that you want money? Hmm? I see that I want money. And then you want it? Yes, sir. <laughs> I see I want it the same as same as saying I want it. Yes, sir. Money. Yes, right? Sex. Yes, sir. Power. Yes, sir. Then you are belong to the all that hideous world. Go if you say I want that, go after it. No, but I, <coughs> I see that I want it, but I don't. You know, uh, there seems to be a a struggle. Why? Face it, why? Why is there a struggle? Why don't you accept the fact? The fact. You want money, sex, power. That's a fact. Isn't I it? I want to change it. Huh? I want to change it. I'm trying to. So, so, meet it. Face it. See. How am I? Is it possible for me to change my desire, my urge for money, etc.? Right? Don't say, don't make it into a struggle. That's a wastage of energy, right? Do you understand? I want money. I say, all right. What is implied? What is implied? Fighting, you follow? Fighting, uh, you know what's implied: getting money, clever lawyer, whatever you do. Fight, 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 hmm? to have more, more and more money. Is it worth it? Which means you bring great deal of sorrow for yourself. Hmm? Right? A great deal of sorrow for the rest of the world. Hmm? So, which is. go into it, find out what to do. If that's what you want, don't fight it. But if you don't want that, finish. <coughs> Why? Because you are conditioned, you follow? Mm. You are conditioned to one thing 
and somebody comes along and says, don't, this ugly thing to do. So you, you make the, what the other says into a non-fact. <laughs> well, I won't go into all that. It seems to me, uh, Mr. Dean, that the, uh, <coughs> these various drives carry a lot of energy of a kind. And uh, if that energy is for some reason stopped, then uh, one finds oneself in a kind of uh, limbo. And this may be difficult. So, <coughs> this is a very complex problem, energy. <coughs> what is energy, if you are interested in it? What is energy? There is mechanical energy, isn't there? Hmm? Right? That is the dynamo, piston, ring, piston, the jet. All those are mechanical things, aren't they? Right? Are you following this? Now, and also, you have a motive for money because that will give you pleasure. So where there is a motive, it becomes mechanical. Right, sir? I wonder if you understand this. M the word motive means to move, something to push. Hmm? But that, uh, is it not wanting money, not wanting No, money? no. That's what the monks have done. And by inside craving for all this, outwardly say, I don't want money. I don't want sex. I'm in the service of God and Jesus or whatever it is. But inside they're burning. For sex, they want to be bishop. <laughs> so you have to you have to learn about yourself, right? Look, Mr. Smith asked that question, energy. It's a very important question because <coughs> most of us have, phys some of us have physical energy, right? Hmm? And others have psychological energy because they believe in something. I believe in Jesus or Rama, Sita or God. Or Else, I believe in it, and therefore I work for it. It gives me tremendous energy. The missionaries that go out and live in the most fantastic countries, savages and so on, they have got tremendous energy because they believe in something, right? Which is mechanistic. I wonder if you see that. So there is. Is there an this is is there an energy which is non mechanistic and therefore limitless? Well, this is very complex, but I won't go into it. So where are we at the end of all this? <coughs> so learning and coming to a conclusion is one thing, right? That is, I learn. I've been talking about it. Forgive me. I, <laughs> which is, there are two ways of learning. Please just listen for amusement. Just listen. You may not, may not accept, but just listen for the fun of it. There are two ways of learning. Learning first, hmm, facts, information, which becomes knowledge. Then from that knowledge, act skillfully or not skillfully. Right? The other is go out, act, and learn. Right? Mao Tse Tung said, go out into the field, 
and learn. Right? The other said, learn first and then act, which is called education. Right? Learn a great deal about uh, engineering, mathematics, this and that, and then, then go out and act. The other says, act for, learn, um, act, and then from action learn. Right? That's clear, isn't it? Hmm? But both uh, act from knowledge. Right? I go out and learn, hmm? and uh, the more I learn, the more I act. The other is learn first and then act. So both are based, both actions are based on knowledge. Right? Right? Do you get this? So, when you are l basing all action on knowledge, then it becomes mechanical, right? Now this you won't. And there is a totally different way of acting, which is to have an insight, not knowledge. I, that's, you, that's too much for you. So, there is an action which is non-mechanistic. And therefore, no wastage of energy. The other is acquiring knowledge, learning, acting, or acting and learning, which are based on knowledge, which becomes mechanical, and therefore that's a wastage of energy. It's a very complex problem. This I won't. Perhaps sometime we can discuss this. Look, you know what insight means? Having a sight in something, hmm? having seeing something immediately. You understand? And seeing something immediately and acting. Say, for instance, I see the mere pursuit of money hmm? – uh, what is it? You follow? I have an insight into it. I see its limitation. I see its, uh, its extravagant activity leading nowhere. Right? I have an insight into it. Therefore, it is not I am acting from not knowledge but perception. This little hmm? <coughs> so at the end of this an hour and th and an hour and a quarter, where are you? Have you got headaches, all of you, <laughs> from listening? Have you learned something? Hmm? Have you learned something? Hmm? No, if you're, so I have, is that becoming a memory? Or you are learning. You understand? All oh, these two. Is it fascinating to go into it, this question? You know, if you are acting from learning, well, if you are acting from knowledge, which most ninety-nine point nine five percent people do, having acquired knowledge, they act. Or having an experience and act from that experience, which is knowledge. 
Hmm? You see, that in that process there is never freedom. You are always moving within a circle. The circle may be expanded, large, but it is always a circle, because the centre is knowledge and the circumference is the action. And from the circumference going back, it is related, back and forth you are doing. So is there an action which is not from a centre? Wonder this is true. So let me leave that alone. <coughs> what are we going to do with what we talked about? An hour and forty, an hour and a quarter. What are we, what are we going to do with it? That is money, sex, power. How do? How are we going to? Meet it. How are you, what's your relationship to it? Money, the pursuit of money, power, sex, all the ugly things that are happening in the world are reproduced for us every night of the week as entertainment. What? They're reproduced as entertainment, and we like to watch them. No, I, I, I don't quite follow what you mean, reproduce. All that is going on in the world is reproduced on the television for our entertainment. So what's our chance to be standing? Well, it's not for our entertainment. You are, you are bringing all the world in here. On the television. What? On the television. She seems to be implying that if, if, it, if I'm not mistaken, that we would be better off if we didn't watch television. No, no. <laughs> I don't quite follow this conversation. What are you, I'm sorry, would you put it differently? You talk, you say, do we want to be like everything that is happening in the world? No, I'm asking. Do we know what is happening? Not only in the world? do you know what is happening in the world, but how are you going to meet it? Well, you meet it as entertainment. What? Oh, you are meeting as an entertainment, a television entertainment? Yes. Huh? Yes. Are you? I think so. Huh? I think we do, yes. Are you meeting what I'm saying as an entertainment? What is my name? Answer my question, please, if you don't mind. <coughs> huh? Are you? Um, some people may. I'm asking all of you. Are you meeting what I'm saying as an entertainment? I don't mind. Please, you won't insult me. <laughs> you see, yes, we well, we want to be entertained by you. I, wait, if you say we want to be entertained by you, I say good morning. I walk out because I don't want to entertain you. That's far from my intention. But if we say, look, let's learn together hmm, about all this mess that's going on in ourselves in the world, and then it's not an entertainment, it's a very serious affair. Now I'm leaving on the 31st for California. Huh? So do we have another? Mrs. D, do we have another? No, please just consider me also. I'm just asking. Do we have another? And also, please consider me also, physically. Do you want another? To be entertained? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll have another. Right.